Hello, everyone. I'm James Milan. Welcome to this week's COVID-19 update with our town manager, Adam Chapdelaine. Adam, hello there. Hello. Good to see you. You too. You too. It's a beautiful day outside. Looking at uh, a number of other ones coming up. Yay. Here we go with spring. Here we go with hope. Great. Speaking of which, let's, um, though I, I would love to get a sense of uh, how town meeting went, we will defer that till after, uh, after we talk about uh, COVID-19 status <clears throat> and progress of the vaccinations in town. Um, just start wherever you'd like and give us the update. So I, I think for today, the focus really is on vaccination efforts. Transmission uh, is still very low in Arlington as compared to a few months ago. Uh, so Health and Human Services has really been focusing on vaccinations. I think as of the last state report that's been issued, uh, about 46% of town residents in total have been fully vaccinated. But my understanding is that uh, near uh, 60 plus percent have at least received their first shot. So we're probably not long away from, uh, you know, getting up into the 60 or 70% range for vaccinated residents. Uh, add on to that 12 to 15 year olds being eligible, I think as of today, um, I'm sure that will further bump our numbers in terms of how many residents in Arlington are vaccinated. The population that we've been focusing on that you and I have now spoke about, I think for the past three or four weeks is this 75 plus age bracket. Uh, that has a lower uh, vaccination percentage than a 65 to 74 year old age bracket. Um, we've been reaching out through the Council on Aging. We've been sending out messaging through community partners and the Human Services Network. And just earlier this week, Director of Health and Human Services, Christine Bongiorno, sent out a townwide phone call. We call it an Arlington Alert, asking people in that age range or those who have loved ones in that age range to please pursue vaccination. And I would say quite sadly, after that Arlington alert went out, um, we did not receive one phone call in response to it, which earlier in the pandemic, if we sent out a phone call asking for people to call, we usually heard, you know, whether it was about vaccines or something else, uh, we would usually get some response. So I think I would just echo the plea um, to those 75 plus who maybe haven't accessed the vaccine yet, uh, or those who have loved ones, again, in that age range, um, if if there, if there are concerns we can address, questions we can answer, um, ways that we can um, frankly convince you that the vaccine is the safe and best thing you can do to keep yourself safe and healthy, please reach out to us. Um, we want to keep you safe. We want to keep the community safe, and we want to maximize our vaccine, uh, our vaccination rate in town. Yeah, and I think uh, maybe even we might add, you know, people who are neighbors uh, to to those in that yeah. age bracket. Um, because uh, the loved ones may not be in this area or something like that. Um, but yeah, it's a little mystifying. And um, and I know that the town is making its best efforts. Heard that message that you were just referring to from Christine Bongiorno on my own phone, home phone uh, just, uh, just yesterday. So um, clearly the town is making its efforts. Let us hope that they, uh, that they yield some fruit because this is clearly a population that that could use the vaccine as much as any other age group uh, that we know. And, um, and yeah, it's a, it's a curious, it, maybe we're really right. You know, we understand on a national and even regional level that uh, we have now hit that point. You've referred to it yourself where we are now needing to persuade and, uh, and, and just find ways to, uh, to convince people that going the vaccination route is the right idea. Um, and clearly, this is a good example of that right here in Arlington. Correct. Yes, well said. Um, so moving on, actually, if you don't mind, I'm going to ask you just one quick question. And with the acknowledgement that you may not have this information at hand, excuse me, um, I was just curious as to the uh, distribution here in town between Pfizer, Moderna, and and uh, J and J. Are there any rough ideas about kind of how what proportion uh, of the vaccines given out in town uh, have been of each type? So I, I know that vaccines that the town itself have distributed have been predominantly Moderna, with some Johnson and Johnson. 
uh, over the past few uh, weeks after, both a little bit before the J&J &J pause and then after the J&J &J pause. Uh, as for residents in general and what they've accessed, I'm sure that's available, but I, do, I don't have it uh, offhand. Yep. Yeah, I was just curious about the, the vaccines that the town itself has distributed. So primarily Moderna uh, and J&J, &J, it sounds like. Correct. Um, yeah, they, right. Pfizer had to be stored at a, it was F Pfizer's uh, storage uh, requirements were very, very cold beyond, beyond the capacity of most local boards of health. Makes sense. All right, thanks a lot for that update, Adam, always helpful. Um, let's talk about town meeting. Uh, the FY22 budget passed on Monday and the capital planning budget started, uh, you know, was introduced and deliberations have started, I, I believe on Wednesday and will continue into this coming Monday. Uh, what are the highlights of uh, those deliberations and decisions as far as you're concerned? And uh, are there any significant changes in the budget uh, that were presented? So, as you mentioned, the operating budget was presented, debated, and approved uh, on Monday night, the FY22 operating budget, which would start on July 1st of this year. And there was quite a bit of debate about one amendment in particular, which would have reduced the police budget to um, either prevent or potentially just slow down the uh, potential implementation of body-worn cameras for police. Uh, that amendment was not successful, so that funding was included in the budget. So the budget was actually approved as presented by the Finance Committee. There weren't any changes made by town meeting. But uh, we basically spent the entirety of the night on Monday night uh, debating, presenting, and then debating the town budget. And I, I think overall, it was an excellent deliberation. I think a lot of good questions were asked about multiple departmental budgets, as well as the police budget, as, as I just mentioned. And, um, you know, from, so I, obviously this is my job, but I'm also sort of a, a government uh, geek or, or nerd at, at times. And I, I thought it was a really good debate. Um, people really dug in on important issues. Uh, I, I hope we were able to answer them at least in a somewhat satisfactory manner. And ultimately, at the end of the night, I think the final vote was 213 to 10 to approve the budget, which is a margin um, I think we'd be happy with, uh, no, no matter the, the situation, if we'd be, we're happy with that, that margin of victory. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, 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 it sounds to me, first of all, I, it, there's a contrast clearly uh, with how you were feeling coming out of some of the, of the deliberations last week, which you felt were, you know, not as as productive in terms of the kinds of issues that were being raised and the way that they were being raised, et cetera. So nice to know that that uh, that this discussion went went uh, much more productively, it sounds like. Uh, and also that kind of overwhelming approval would indicate that the people who who really were digging in on these issues got answers that they were were satisfied with because uh, the numbers would indicate that. So that that's a good sign as well. Um, <clears throat> I uh, just wondered uh, again. I, I perhaps it, the answer is simply that there isn't. But um, are there any changes um, that were presented? I'm, I know you said the operating budget did go through in that way. Um, anything as you as you look at uh, conversations coming up around capital um, this coming Monday and and into the next session, if necessary, uh, any any changes that we should be you know aware of potential changes. So there's two amendments on the floor right now for capital. Uh, one amendment proposed by the capital planning committee uh, and then brought forward by the finance committee and one made by a town meeting member. Uh, the one brought forward by the capital planning committee is to amend the budget to accommodate further funding uh, for the DPW construction project based on uh, <clears throat> pricing that came in uh, driven almost entirely by the cost of materials rising over the past few months. Um, so that was debated, started to be debated last night. And another amendment to reduce the, the budget by $30,000, um, which uh, is based on some marble uh, bulwarking at the Highland Fire Station that's been cracked since the building opened about a decade ago that needs to be repaired. So um, that has been debated, and I think you know, a vote would most likely be taken on Monday. But those are the only two amendments on the floor uh, right now. So I would expect the, the, hopefully the budget will be changed based on the Capital Planning Committee's recommended amendment, and, we, and we'll, we'll see what the will of town meeting is on the other amendment that's been filed. Okay, and last question. Um, 
you have long experience, as you were noting earlier, with uh, these these kinds of deliberations uh, and and just the processes around uh, passing the budgets. Um, you were mentioning that things went pretty smoothly, and you were impressed by the the, the process itself in terms of the capital plan. Uh, excuse me, in terms of the operating budget being passed. In general. Uh, is that is one harder than the other to kind of get to to uh, clarity and agreement around um, operating versus capital, or is it just kind of change year to year between the two of them anyway? That's a great question. Um, I th my recollection is that operating takes a little bit longer to go through than capital. Um, you know, it can change year to year. I think capital in some ways is more straightforward because people can more readily get their heads around the purchasing of a vehicle or the construction of the building or the replacement of an air conditioner or you know things that are more or, or buying computers. Um, sometimes the operating budget can be more complicated because it you can really dig into the nitty gritty of different programs that town departments operate. So I, generally speaking, I would say operating takes a little longer to debate, but um, but at, at, at the end of the day, I, I feel like town meeting members in Arlington come come pretty prepared. Uh, they've read the documents. Um, you know, they some some ask questions in advance, some ask questions on the floor. And and I, and I think whenever whenever you're engaging, probably in life, never mind in government, in a fact based debate and deliberation, you're you're probably in a good place. <laughs> Uh, the, very good words uh, for for the zeitgeist of our current moment in time here in the United States of America. Thank you for that, and thanks again for your patience with my with my questions. Some of which I know, uh, you know, probably not only were did I not prepare you for uh, at all in terms of answering, but they may be going beyond the scope of what we usually do here. So I appreciate it's, that. It's, it's good practice for the town meeting sessions to be asked questions you weren't expected. <laughs> happy happy to provide some practice then in that case um that is it as far as i'm concerned you'll be happy to know um anything we might have forgotten as, uh, from your perspective i'll just quickly add that the american rescue plan act regulations have been issued arlington as some may know is slated to receive in excess of 30 million dollars from that federal act uh, so we're now analyzing those more detailed regulations and we plan on reporting out probably to the long range planning committee, um, not next week, but the week after, and then more publicly after that groups had a chance to assess our evaluation and recommendations. So uh, more to come in upcoming weeks on how the Rescue Act will benefit Arlington. And clearly that is great news in and of itself, though I must say that uh, in a conversation I had with our state Senator Cindy Friedman earlier this week, uh, it became clear that a, a, a large amount of money coming in uh, offers, you know, offers some challenges of its own uh, a, a certain amount of the time, just in terms of figuring out what the rules and regulations are for how it can be uh, spent uh, or the policies uh, about expending it, et cetera. And then just, you know, obviously figuring out what to do with it. So good luck with that. And we look Thank forward you. to further updates on on how that money is going to be used for Arlington Arlingtonians benefit. All right. Thanks a lot, Adam. Um, appreciate it. I have been speaking, of course, with Adam Chapdelaine, our town manager for the COVID-19 update this week and some town manager matters as well that we threw in there. Um, thanks again, Adam, for your patience uh, and, uh, and your responsiveness. Thank you to you out there in the audience for joining us. I'm James Milan. We'll see you next time. <laughs>